ladies and gentlemen the developers of rise of kingdoms are looking to implement at least two new formations to the game and this was actually revealed during a player developer council meeting so today we're going to go over all of the proposed changes to the formation system and then i'm going to give my feedback on these changes later in the video because i think one of the main purposes of them revealing this information during a player council was to actually get feedback and i don't think the developers are gonna like my my feedback or even consider it at all but I feel like it's important that I put my feedback out there because well I care about the future of the game and I want to have a discussion with you guys but first what's going on guys cheers now before we jump into the proposed changes to the formation system the developers also revealed during this player council how much it actually costs to increase the iconic tier for the dragon breath bow now the reason that my head is floating in the middle of the screen here is because I'm actually covering up the people that were on the screen. I don't know if they want to actually be in a video here, but you can see here that getting iconic level one is what's already in the game right now. It costs one iconic crystal getting iconic level two. And remember, this is for the dragon's breath bow specifically. Um, it takes 20 materials and one full blueprint. Okay. For tier three, we have 35 materials. Okay. Then we have 50 materials and all these still require one blueprint. And then finally we have tier five, which costs 80 materials and one blueprint. So if we look at the dragon's breath bow in game right now, in order to craft this weapon, you need one blueprint and 90 materials plus 20 million gold with this tiered system it's going to cost significantly more materials to get to level five iconics than it would to even craft the weapon in the first place and so when we look at this upgrade system i think like if blueprints are really hard to come by i would say for most players if you're going to be building two or three armies like should you be using those blueprints to upgrade the iconic level on one weapon or boots or gloves or whatever or should you just craft a second one for your second set and hope that you get a special talent i don't know why they're using blueprints and materials as upgrade requirements for the iconic system when we already need that for the refinement system i feel like it would have made more sense to make it like materials plus an iconic crystal or something like that right like this is kind of what i expected honestly where you know as you go up the tiers it costs more in order to upgrade those levels and if we're looking at like tier five for example like 80 materials on a blueprint that's that is basically in an, an, crafting another bow right and it's like i don't really know if this is worth that much for most players so for free to play players and low spenders like iconic tier two isn't really that big of a deal iconic tier three kind of is because troop capacity is directly proportionate to how much damage you're dealing and then all damage like i mean man it just gets so expensive as you go up here from a free to play player's perspective i feel like free to play players are only going to be able to use three armies one of each troop type i just can't like imagine a world where like six to 12 months from now like free to play players can can run more than three armies like even it's even a challenge right now so this is um i mean i don't hate the system honestly it's a guaranteed path for progression which i find okay but we definitely need significantly more materials and blueprints if you're gonna add a whole second system that requires the same materials and upgrade cost as the refinement system which is already in the game that's just my two cents on that and you can let me know what you think about the iconic tiers in the comments section below but the primary focus of this video is feedback about formations okay so here are the main issues as outlined by the developers first of all they say formations lack depth and only wedge and arch are viable for most commanders now this first part here formations lack depth this is the first piece of feedback that i ever gave for the formation system when it was first revealed when they were hinting at the release of the formation system they made it sound like oh there's going to be ranged combat and there's going to be all these different ways to you know have a strategic advantage and then they dropped it and it was just like five percent skill damage bonus to march speed and it's like eh, that's really not strategic right so out of the gate this was a primary thing that i I mentioned this like there's no depth here okay it's just flat stats like it is what it is so the fact that they're bringing this up now like bro you're late to the party like this was this was before the system even came out we knew that this was the case so I guess welcome to the party like you're a little late but here we are special inscriptions are hard to get yes and the solution for that is make it easier it's 
that simple armament upgrade progression is uneven true we need a way to guarantee the progression for our armaments i like that they are recognizing these as issues ordinary inscriptions are too generic um i think that's sort of true but i also think like a nice bump in stats is okay they don't reflect different formations and commanders yeah that's also true this kind of goes back to there being a lack of depth okay so these are the main issues and i would agree with pretty much all this right it lacks depth it's hard to get special inscriptions and you know there's generic inscriptions that don't really matter okay great so what's the solution make it more complicated really okay wow are we looking at the same issues like okay let me just save my feedback um here we see uh they're looking to do new formations okay two new formations are currently in the works right now there could be more later right and if they're adding more now then surely they can add more later like a year or two years from now whatever they're also looking to add new inscriptions so currently we have special inscriptions and common inscriptions and they're looking to add a blue tier or a rare tier of inscriptions okay that to me means that next year we're gonna get purple inscriptions guys isn't that cool uh so anyway they didn't say that um here we have the testudo formation all right uh and this says that this formation will take less damage when you have a shield and have improved healing so okay that's interesting if i move my head here you'll see that they gave an example of a testudo formation inscription called rock solid that says shield and healing boost so perhaps you know if you have a shield active it gets plus 200 shielding factor or something like that um i think that this is fine like as a as a formation is this okay sure right like um, i think this is totally fine but the problem is like healing and shielding have been so far power crept out of the meta besides um garrisons right garrisons obviously people use healing and shielding all the time we have zenobia we have heraclius right but like in the open field you basically never have uh, a shield and if you do have healing it's on a passive like on Boudicca Prime for example right nobody's actually running around the field with a Richard the first it doesn't happen nobody's really using Charles Martel if they can help it right people who use Charles Martel use him because they have nothing else right so like you know it is what it is um and I think that as a formation this is fine this will be sort of a must-have for Garrison but my concerns with this right are that like for now with Zenobia and with Heraclius right there are commanders that would greatly benefit from a formation like the Testudo formation but in the future you know depending on how the meta shifts and with power creep like what if you know a year from now the garrison meta doesn't use a shield and it doesn't use healing it's like okay well now you have all these armaments and you know inscriptions for this formation that is no longer even meta right so that's the problem I see with this is that the the benefit of of formations and and armaments being uh more generic like skill damage is that you can move it from one you know meta to another right like as the meta advances you know skill damage is still going to be relevant you know normal attack damage will probably still be relevant right and so you can make you can make that shift when you have formation and formations and inscriptions that are so specific here right like with the echelon formation for example it's not that it's useless it's just that it's too hard to, to to get them right and we'll talk about that later uh so here we see special inscriptions okay let me see if I can move over here here they're just giving you an example of special inscriptions so here we have the hunter inscription okay and the wielder gains five percent skill damage and blah 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 there's a whole bunch of other stuff they're looking to add rare inscriptions here okay rare inscriptions I'll move my head again to sort of bridge the gap between the power of a special special inscription and a regular inscription okay this one just gives you like attack and this one gives you rage when you deal direct damage so I think adding a new rarity of inscription is fine but the problem isn't that why don't you just make it easier to get special inscriptions I don't really understand the problem with that strategy because if we go back to this bullet point here special inscriptions are hard to get like yeah that's true just make it easier right like just give us more ways to get them give us ways to implement them right making a complex randomized system even more complex by adding a new rare inscription tier like sure that's one way you can do it but like it's not the best way to solve a problem in my opinion like you've outlined the problem exactly make it easy I don't know I don't know let's look at uh let's move on here this says how to acquire the new content okay so currently 
we have travel dispatch events bundles and armament chests and these will all contain the new content okay so basically everything that you're currently doing you can get the new testudo formation from all of these things the testudo formation armaments or whatever uh so that's fine um what this tells me is that if you are hoarding the formation choice chests for example you should continue hoarding if you care about the testudo formation because you you in based on this slide uh, you'll be able to get the testudo formation from the formation choice chest so if that sounds interesting to you then stop opening those chests right now while i'm here let me buy those they also say that they will have a limited time event coming after the update earn rewards like rare formation choice chests based on how many armaments you've collected okay so the more armaments you collect the more rewards you get a limited time event doesn't solve the problem of an uneven progression system right like by limited time by definition it's only going to be around for a certain period and therefore after that limited time event is over we will be back to the same methods as before now I suspect that they will add maybe more travel chances more dispatch chances more events right and probably more bundles I don't know so adding more of these these things is good and adding more events is good but a limited time event like I don't really care about that to be honest future plans see if any commanders or combat roles lack a suitable formation periodically add new formations for them optimize update announcements in the experience of upgrading armaments and focus on making the game more fun without putting too much pressure on players okay so this is their goal here and this is going to be the part of the video where I give my feedback okay now let me just say that if you are watching this video and you've spent more than fifty thousand dollars in rods of kingdoms we're not really even playing the same game anymore and i've that that was abundantly clear with the changes to the equipment system right when they announced that they were going to add new equipment that's a higher level a lot of players who spent a lot of money were very upset about this and they the reason for that is because they had full legendary full iconic full you know special inscription everything right and like they were worried that they would have to dismantle those legendaries and like i i get their concerns right but like it's like a millionaire crying in a lambo it's like i can't like i don't really feel that bad for you because like you spent like that's no one told you to spend that much like what do you like what are you doing right so basically what i'm saying is that i i've seen a lot of people give their feedback on this system already and a lot of them are the mega whales and i just feel like their feedback is so tone deaf to like what 99 of the players are even experiencing right like 99 of players are running around with like three armies purple gear right like they're in kvk4 okay like like most players um don't even understand this system most players play for 10 minutes a day like so that's like your average player base right what i'm trying to say is i feel like my perspective is a little bit closer to the ground it's a it's a little bit more like you know the low spender maybe free to play obviously you'd have to ask somebody like 12 inch what they think about this for a true free to play player's perspective on this okay but from my perspective um and i think i've said this in a video before maybe not the formation system from the ground up it was not built with player satisfaction in mind right players enjoyment was was not the priority for the formation system that was abundantly clear because the stats are completely randomized and then they threw in garbage stats that like nobody cares about like gold gathering speed right like those things are that's garbage and then it was further reinforced by the solution to that being continued randomization with a punishment being the cap if you don't get lucky within 10 spins then you'll never get a perfect armament right um so from the very beginning like the armament system is so flawed from a player satisfaction perspective at least for free to play and low spenders there's like i'm so powerless to getting good stuff that it's not i don't even think about armaments it's there's it's out of my control right like it's not it's just do i get lucky yes or no can i you know spin the transmutation wheel enough times to fix it yes or no and that's it right so for me the the formation system was so fundamentally broken from day one that the only real way to solve it is to just uh delete it i'm not even kidding and this is why like my my feedback is not going to be taken seriously because it's it's not within the realm of possibility but the solution is to not have the system like the sys like the game was better without it right like if you take a step back and you look at like is the game better with more randomness or less i would say if you're trying to build a strategy game right like which is what rise of kingdoms is less randomization is better because you can actually plan your strategy right so from my perspective if you have a system in the game that is kind of just parasitic like 
it's not it's just there for you know to add fluff or whatever you can't improve a system like that you can't improve a parasite to make it fun if it's entirely random right so the best solution is delete it and just come up with a better system but we're too far gone for that right and that's why my feedback is kind of it's not real okay people have spent thousands of dollars on the system so they're not going to delete it okay the solution is to give players ways to choose what they get like i feel like i'm taking crazy pills here where like how is like why is that such a hard like going into the kvk shop right and being able to pick something from the shop an inscription and know that i get that inscription and we're chilling that's good okay i like that give me a way to get something that i can guaranteed get likewise give me a way where i can guaranteed get the stats that i want okay that's the way that you solve the problem okay if you're not going to scrap the system entirely then remove some of the randomness right and again like the fact that the original solution was more randomness is like it kind of just tells me that like my this feedback is just not really going to get heard by anybody um and so it, it like i almost didn't want to even make the video because it's like i don't know if this is like even going to be taken seriously by anybody right but if you have formations that lack depth and you want to add new formations that are more specific to particular commanders right which is what it looks like they want to do here then what you need to do in order for players to even participate in a system like that is give them the choice to get what they want like let's say you implement the test tuto formation if I don't get any armaments or inscriptions for test tuto formation randomly then I can't even participate in it anyway. So it doesn't even matter. Like there's, there's no, what are we even talking about here? Right? Like whether or not I get to enjoy the testudo formation isn't even up to me. Like, so I don't really care if you add it or not, cause it is what it is. And then making special inscriptions hard to get, like, I understand that, you know, there's things that players need to chase and whatever, but you know, the fact that in the KVK shop, you can pick a special inscription. I think that's good. I think that you're on the right track there, but armament upgrade progression. Like I need a way to get the three and a half percent infantry health every time. I don't know what I have to do to get there, but you know, randomly clicking the transmutation button and using all 10 chances. And then it's in the garbage. It's like, ah, oh, man, that system is horrible. So like there's pretty obvious ways to solve these things, I think, but more formations not 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 the solution that i that i would want right and also the timing of this is really bad because we already have a new system that we have to think about and worry about right like there's going to be a change to the equipment system and this is a pretty big change and like this is already going to be the focus of like what players are going to be upgrading right so like i don't know why they would start to even think about adding another change to another system simultaneously like if you're gonna add new formations talk to me this time next year because until then like i, I can't even think about this right like i, I kind of didn't even want to make this video because i just care so little about armaments that it's like i feel like a lot of you guys feel the same way right like if i can't control what i get then why even think about it why even like what are we even talking about like i either get it or i don't okay look let me give a, a more realistic example here okay let's look at the talent system with the talent system when you get to level 60 when you get a commander to level 60 you have the maximum amount of talent points okay and you can sit here and you can theory craft and you can look at you can look at every single talent and you could look at what could you possibly get with the talent points that you have at your desk your disposal and you can spend time experimenting with different talent builds and seeing like okay this talent build is better in canyon this talent build is better for garrison this talent build is better for open field and you can experiment with all of those different things because in order to experiment all i have to do is reset and go again and try something new okay the point that i'm making here is that this is 100 in my control and i know exactly what i'm getting for every talent point so that makes me think about the strategy for what i'm going to do but if you look at you know opening a formation choice chest why would i even waste my time theory crafting what the best armaments are if i have no way to know if i will ever get them right and there's nothing that i can do to guarantee that i get them faster so that's the problem and and that's why it lacks depth like i don't lay in bed and think about the outcome of a slot machine like oh how can i win the jackpot on a slot machine like you, you there's no theory crafting there you can't you can't do it so like there's like we're, we're not even having the right discussion here the discussion should be how do we get more players to get the stats that they really want on their armaments without it being another roulette wheel right and then once we solve that problem once i have a clear progression path for my armaments then add new and 
add new formations go ahead that's fine i'm totally i'm happy with you know new formations that add more depth and they're more commander specific and this one's for shielding and this one's for heal whatever totally fine i like that idea but the system that you're building on top of them is is so flawed from the from the foundation that it's like I don't really care what formations they add because it doesn't matter to me, right? Like I can't, I have no control over it. It is what it is. And look, I know that I've been very critical in this video and potentially even negative. I'll have to watch back the, when I, when I edit this video, I'll have to watch it back. But I, I want to make it clear that like these, this feedback comes from, uh, you know, for me, I like the game a lot. I really like rise of kingdoms. Obviously I've been playing it for five years. I've been making videos about it for like three, four years, whatever. And so, you know, I'm, I'm an associate creator for rising games, right? Like I love the game. I really do the feedback that I'm giving. It's it's harsh, but it's like, that's really how I feel about this. And because I'm not a mega well, I'm not a Kraken. Okay. I feel like a lot of players probably feel the same way. And so I think it's important that I make this video. Okay. That's just, that's what I think I could be wrong. If free to play players love the armament system, let me know in the comment section below i would really love to know that uh i personally think the system is very very not it's well i'll leave it there okay let me know what you think about the upcoming changes to the formations and armaments in the comment section below what do you think about the cost to upgrade legendary equipment i would love to hear from you about that as well and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and don't forget to drop a thumbs up on the video it helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace